Hello everyone, this week we'll be creating our resume and this tutorial is going to have a little bit more information on resumes and just a brief explanation of what to do in InDesign. So your resume is really, no matter what, whether you're in the arts or whether you're, you know, in other fields, is a documentation that displays your professional history whether it's for uh, for a job, for hiring, for scholarship, um, for even opportunities, showing opportunities, and so forth, or just trying to uh, get to know someone, uh, maybe for like a, a visit, you're going to want to have your resume. It should be one, one to two pages, mostly one page, and it should list not only your work experience like this example here, uh, it should have your education, your contact information, your skills, in a very easy to read manner. As you can see in this one, this is a great example, it's not too heavily designed, there's not too much imagery, but the type has beautiful hierarchy, you can clearly read it, it has a lovely white space, um, it's broken down nicely into two columns where the work experience is wider um, and uh, it has the dates. It's in the order of most recent. And on the right, a brief uh, explanation of education and a list of the skill set. I like how this one's broken down into categories based on design, prototyping, and research. There's a lot of content here and it's easy to read through the hierarchy, through bolding, through diff using different typefaces, not too many, but just enough um, so that you can maneuver and read the resume. This is a good resource here that I'll put in the website, but lists some really just simple, basic resumes. Now, I'm not saying you don't have to add special touches, personal logos, um, but remember you don't want to distract from the content, especially something like this that has just is so rich in experience and work um, and what you want to demonstrate that, again, too much imagery or even a, a photo can, can be read the wrong way. Um, I don't think you should have a photo on your resume. It, it sends the wrong message, um, kind of comes off as a little pretentious and it makes you seem like they want to judge you as a person as from from your looks as opposed to right your experience as you see in this one um, they demonstrate not only their experience but some of the research um, as well as uh, awards they've received so your resume for this assignment can be just a basic work resume um, that has some educational aspects to it. If you intend to plan, if you intend, to, excuse me, uh, apply for some jobs, you know, your resume should be tailored to that job that you're high, that you are applying to. So that's, with that being said, your resume changes. You have uh, quite a few different resumes actually, depending on the position. So this is a great example of using a very simple icon or excuse me monogram and then using a little splash of color uh, you can see here all caps for the names but then as you get into the heavy body content it goes back to sentence case you see awards here it has just subtle little subtle um, imagery that matches the icon here so you can have a little bit of fun with this, but just make sure it's unified um, and that you can easily read the content. Just like this, you see how there's just a lot of white space. Again, very popular, two columns in the design. Like so. So I will have this link in your web course. It's, it's a great article on Medium, 10 Amazing Designer Resumes That Pass Google's Bar. So let's go to the InDesign file. So we'll go to Create New. And we're going to make sure it's for print. 
You'll notice there's some suggestions here, like letter. We're going to stay with letter, but we're going to make sure we're in inches. So that we have 8.5 by 11, very popular size. One page. We do not need to have facing pages checked because we're only doing one document. I'm going to create three columns for this, but you can decide how many columns you would like. This is the space between the columns, the gutter. I'm going to increase that to 0.25 inches. And the rest I will leave as is. So the reason I'm creating three columns here instead of two, it's still, but it gives me a chance to have a little bit of variety in width. So maybe as you saw in those um, resumes before, they had one column a little bit smaller than the other. This allows, you know, for more information for maybe your work experience, as opposed to this area, you could put education or vice versa. You could do this and let this be your education and then your work experience. So I'm not going to actually build the resume because I want you to personalize this and I want you to come up with a design. So I don't want you to um, follow along in this tutorial. I just want you to see some of the stuff that I do and incorporate it into your resume. So when you start and you want to start with your, say your header image, um, in traditional professional ones, some people even just use their name and then they have their contact information to the side. Um, a lot of people use up the space, so you decide where you want to have it. So title, maybe just email address instead. So we want to create hierarchy so that we know while looking through this, people can easily understand what's important, what to read first, right? You want your name to be read first. You want your name to be memorable. So you definitely consider this your title. So I might go in and create a bold typeface, change the size, um, maybe even put it all caps. Um, and then I wouldn't want to do that with my title, though. Um, I like this so you know right now I'm a lecturer if I'm not sure if I want all caps or not I'll just type my name and then I can go select all go to type change case uppercase if I don't like that I can always go back so that's in type change title case, so forth. It's nice to have it this way. Um, it's nice to type it out first traditionally and then you can always change it. And then I will put, you, you would put your email address. So figure out a way to put your contact information first. It's easy, it's something you know. And then you move on to the uh, work experience or educational part of the resume. You're going to have to fulfill a few requirements. Um, if you're going to pursue first your work experience, you're going to need at least the position, right, whatever title you're given, the employer, the location, and the dates you worked there. If um, you are currently working somewhere, you're going to indicate when you started, and then you might write to present. Um, so... For example, 2015 to present, like that. Um, you could indicate a little short, term, short biography below to show what you've done. As you can see in the uh, resume supply, that's what a lot of the designers here have done. They've shown their place. Um, they've started with Google. Uh, <laughs> who wouldn't, right? I would definitely want Google to be the first thing you see. Um, and then their title there where it was and the years they worked as well as again the short biography of what they've done if you instead want to start with your education you're going to need to indicate your degree where you got it from and the year that you graduated in this case for your college you will type in your expected 
graduate year, but for your high school, you can have that. So to make it more interesting though, let's start to change up the typefaces. Just like the ones here, you can see, just by simply changing the weight, um, the, the particular font, or the boldness of it can create hierarchy and allow for you to e re easily read the content. So for position, I might go ahead and say, that's one of the most important, you know, position and the employer, depending on uh, where you've been employed, you might want to indicate, you know, you want to emphasize the position or the employer. So we'll go, I'm going to go with knockout. I'm going to make this just a bit bigger than the rest. And my employer, I want to keep in this Minion Pro, but I want to maybe make it a semi-bold to distinguish it from the location. The location and date aren't as as important to me it, for my design, so I'm going to make them a little bit smaller, but I'm going to adjust the spacing between. So I'm going to adjust the tracking for all of this. Now, they're all different, especially this one. I want to modify the tracking. There we go. And then my brief biography. Not really liking the size there. I might change this back to a sans serif because it's a it's getting a little bit difficult to read. No, now adjust the tracking back down. There we go. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. Let me slightly bring in the tracking on this one as well. So you don't want to have to do this for each line. Yes, you could copy and paste it, um, but it gets a little bit difficult. You have to retype it every time. So when you have, say, the same information again, and you type it out. So for this, I'll, I'll write lecture, university, Orlando, Florida, and that would be from 2017 to 2019, or excuse me, to present. It would be from 2018 to present. And I want to just copy all this information. So this is where we go to our styles panel, window styles, character styles. I already had it open. <laughs> right here. I'm going to delete the ones I already have. This allows you to repeat the styles over and over again. It also allows you, if you want to make a change to the style, it, that change will be replicated throughout the entire document. So I'm going to go ahead and click New, and I'm going to type in Position, and I'm going to double click it. If I want to go ahead, and I can even change some of the information in here so I can adjust the tracking. Now the difference between adjusting the tracking here and over here means that anything applied with this style will change. So if I want to assign position to this form here. Whenever I go in and I change this, oops, didn't want to do that. If I go in and I change, say, the size, it will change in both areas. This is so important to have, especially when you're working on a resume and you need to modify it as you go. So then I'll go ahead and assign the style to... Oh, I need to make it first, so I'm going to go ahead and make my employer style. And you might not have to be this specific. Maybe you want to say this is like main 
And then this is subheader. Doesn't have to be the specific title. Um, and then so this will be subheader. If I say, oh, it doesn't look great on this one, I might go ahead and make the size a little bit smaller. Oops, smaller, not bigger. There we go. Yeah. And then I need to change this as well. So I will do, maybe I'll do small sans serif. Whatever, whatever works for you, right? Whatever helps. And then I'll apply this here. So then I'm, I'm going to go ahead and change this. And then I would just go ahead and save this as a new style. This applies to typefaces. Character style to applies to the typefaces and the words themselves. Now, if you want to modify not just the text, but maybe the spacing around the text, there's more options out there for paragraph styles. So when you go into the paragraph style, they do have the basic characters listed. But they also have more options in terms of how you use body copy, how the paragraph is ruled, um, how it's even tabbed, like where does it line up? See how, see, look, pay attention right here where it's going to actually line up. So if you say you wanted this to line up differently, you can go ahead and hit OK. And now you have paragraph styles applied. So if you wanted to, again, have more options, that's where paragraph styles apply, applies. Um, that's not seen in character styles. See, you can use the character style, but the paragraph style will affect how it sits in the body. So I'm going to go in the paragraph style again. I want to change up the, tra the letting slightly. There we go, just to bring it down, and I also don't want it to go that far in. So I'm going to bring my tab back to the start. Yeah. If I decide I don't like the tracking, you always want to make sure you do it in the character style. If you do outside, a plus will appear. It'll be fine if you keep it, but what I would like to do is make sure that goes away and just adjust any little tracking in here. That way it stays consistent throughout. So as we go through, I'm going to go ahead and go to the education. Um, Since I have the place first, I will indicate the location. I will then want to write BFA, graphic design, in 2011. Since this is very big, I might decide that I'm going to put my major first, so BFA, graphic design, comma, 2011, and change this now to be the subheader. So now I would continue to expand on, on what I've done. I would want to include more work experience. Uh, to the left here, I could decide where I want my space to end. I could bring in my type here. So then I could start to modify the space as my content grows. My advice is to continue creating content, uh, include your labels, use the styles, both character and paragraph styles. And if you want to add some imagery, I would keep it, again, simple. I would craft it. You can craft any imagery in InDesign, just like you would 
in um, Illustrator, but what I tend to do is I tend to create it in Illustrator and bring it over like we've done before. So say something like all the labels for our course are right here. So say I wanted to bring in this little icon, even though that's not for my resume. I could either copy paste right in and then scale it down or I could place the file so if you want to add imagery you can if you decide you need to modify the document you can go to adjust your document in any way you can do so up here you can also go in and go to document setup and modify the pages as well as the size of those pages if you need to adjust the margins go to layout margins and columns and say I want larger margins on top but I don't want to affect anything else I'm gonna make all the settings the same I'm gonna unclick that and then I'm gonna adjust my margin if I need to if I want to bring my header down or, or up so say I want my name and I want my work experience to be on the same line I would adjust that margin you can go into here and decide how you would like to justify something I would stick with left right justify I would not align center anything align centering makes it very difficult to read the only time I might align center something is if I were doing a header right at the center of the page and that's where you put your name and you want it to be centered that could be a way you do it but remember when you do center something you lose a lot of space here and here just to reiterate what we've done we've gone in and used the type tool we've modified some of the properties of the type we've created just a sense of hierarchy by changing up the typeface the weight of it and the look of it in terms of what font is picked and we've saved that style in InDesign here. And when you want to save them you can even add them to your current library for future use. They can also be loaded in just like so. So again very basic this tutorial Look at some examples here or in web courses to help you, to help guide you and decide what kind of, how many columns you would like. So the columns meaning the vertical arrangement and how you would like to display your information. Something like this is really great, but as you can see, it gets a little bit heavy in terms of text. So this one, I think, would need maybe a little bit more white space, some tracking and some letting to create some breathability. This is nice. This you feel how this is easier to read and see and understand. Makes you want to look at it. Even the dates are nice how they put them to the right here. They right justify this column to create a nice little gap that's not too overwhelming. So again, up to you how you'd like to do it. There's plenty of options out there. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.